Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today we are looking at a brand new power station from Vigorpool. This is the Captain 1200. And like the name suggests, it has 1200 watts of output via the pure sine wave inverter and right around 1280 watt hours of capacity. Now this does have lithium iron phosphate batteries inside, so it is rated at 3500 life cycles to 80% of the original capacity. So you get a long safe life out of the batteries in this power station. Now this power station has a ton of really cool features. It has smart app connectivity, wireless charging, UPS functionality, and it has internal charging built in the front so there's no external charging brick. But one of the coolest features is that you can actually purchase a second one of these and connect them together to double the output of the inverter and double the actual capacity of the power station. For example, there is a parallel port on the back of the power station and once you connect two of them together, you can get 2400 watts output from the AC inverter and right around 2500 watt hours of capacity. Now I've had a lot of people ask me in previous videos, can you connect two power stations together and get double the output? In most cases, that is a no, but with the Captain 1200, you can actually connect them together and not only get double the capacity, but you get double the output for the AC inverter, basically allowing you to power any appliance in your house during a power outage. Now the Captain 1200 is currently priced at $1,100 on Figurepool's website and on Amazon, which means it has a current price of 85 cents per watt hour. Now with all of these features like UPS functionality, internal charging, smart app connectivity, usually you'll pay over 90 cents or even closer to a dollar per watt hour. So this does come in at a fairly good price. But how does it actually perform? Well, in the rest of the video, we're gonna do extensive testing on the DC output on the AC inverter, and we're gonna be testing UPS functionality. And we're also gonna test to see how well and fast it charges. Now, after all the video is done, we'll put it through my power station grading system to give it a score of one to 10 to see how well this one stacks up against the competition. Let's go ahead and jump into the AC inverter testing first. Now I've gone ahead and flipped the power station around so you guys can see the back here. This is where the AC inverter is. There are four outlets that you can plug your appliances into and you have a power switch on the far side. Now, one of the best ways to test an AC inverter is to put it through a max load test meaning you put it under max load to see if it has any issues, overheating, to see if you get any voltage drop, to see how loud it is, and if it puts out a pure sine wave. So what I did was I put a 1200 watt load on the AC inverter, set my timer, and let the test go. Now within a few minutes of the test, I plugged in my oscilloscope, and I was able to get 120 volts output sitting right at 60 hertz, so very good output there and swapping it over to the wavelength mode, I was able to get a pure sine wave output from the AC inverter. So the power that you get from this power station is very similar to the power you get from your power company. So thumbs up there. Now, after half the test had gone through, I noticed how quiet the fans were. So I pulled out my decibel meter and at a meter away, it was only putting out 48 decibels. So very quiet fans on this power station. And just to let you know, throughout the entire test, it never went above 48 decibels. This is what it sounded like. Now, just to give you guys an example, some other power stations I've tested have gone over 55 decibels, almost up to 60 decibels, which are almost so loud that you have to yell over them. So very good fans in this power station. Now, I did let the test go all the way to the end. It ran a full 15 minutes, didn't have any issues pulling 1200 watts. So thumbs up, it did pass our max load test on the AC inverter. Now the Captain 1200 does have UPS functionality, meaning it acts like an uninterrupted power supply. And in the owner's manual, it says it has a swap over time of 10 milliseconds. Now, why would that be useful? Well, if you have a certain device that you wanna keep running in a power outage, you can have this plugged into the wall and then whatever appliance plugged into this. And then whenever this senses the power outage, it actually swaps over to the batteries inside automatically. So one of the best ways to test this is by plugging in a couple different sensitive electronics and seeing if they stay powered on after we unplug it from the wall. So I plugged in my desktop computer, my studio lights and a portable monitor. And I unplugged these from the wall and you can see that it has the fastest Three, little blip two, over to one. the actual inverter and batteries inside. So it definitely works as advertised with that 10 milliseconds. In fact, I did it two other times and I did not see any issues with the portable monitor staying powered on or the desktop computer staying powered on. The UPS functionality of this power station is very good with the swap over time of 10 milliseconds. Now the next test that I did on the AC inverter was a surge load test to see if it could handle over 1200 watts. 
Now I connected up my 10 inch sliding compound miter saw because I know that this pulls more than 1200 watts on startup. Now taking a closer look at the screen, you can see it pulled over 1400 watts when it started up which is very good that this was able to surge and pull that much power for a brief amount of time. Now the next test that I did on the AC inverter was connect up my guitar amp to see if there was any noise or interference on the AC inverter. And this is what it sounded like when I connected up the guitar amp. Now I also tried to test this while it was charging. Now unfortunately, whenever it's charging, you have the fans running in the background, so I couldn't tell if it was making noise on the guitar amp or not. Now the last two tests that I did on the AC inverter have to deal with the actual capacity or the idle power draw that it uses. Now I charged the power station up to 100% and wanted to discharge it, so I connected up my watt meter to track all the power coming out of the power station and discharges it at 0.2C rate. And by the time that the power station got all the way down to 5%, it shut off the AC inverter and I was able to pull a total of 1100 watt hours. Now looking at the advertised capacity of 1280 watt hours, that was around 85.9% of the advertised capacity. So we did hit our goal of 85% of the actual capacity we can pull from this power station. So I charged it all the way back up to 100% and wanted to see how much power the inverter used as it sat idle. Because the power station with the AC inverter on, it uses background power. So I wanted to see how much power that would be. So I left it, the AC inverter on for 10 hours and when I came back, it was still powered on so there aren't any auto shut off settings with the AC inverter and it was sitting at 85%, meaning we lost 15% or 1.5% per hour over that 10 hour test. So most power stations will use around one to 2% and this was right in the middle at 1.5% per hour. Now one of the most common questions that I get is how big of a power station do I need to run a full-size refrigerator in the event of a power outage? Now, I usually recommend a thousand watt inverter or a little bit larger. And so this Captain 1200 with its 1200 watt inverter is a perfect choice because those refrigerator compressors surge a bunch of power when they turn on, even though they only pull around 100 to 200 watts while they're running, they can pull over a thousand watts or even higher when they first turn on. So smaller power stations usually can't run a full-size refrigerator. So when you have a bigger power station like this, you can get a fairly good runtime. So I wanted to test that out and see how long this would run my full-size fridge. So I plugged this into my fridge downstairs after this was charged up to 100%. And 18 hours later, the AC inverter shut off. So I was able to run my full-size fridge 18 hours off this power station. Now, just keep in mind, if you had solar panels, you could get a indefinite runtime as long as you had sun to charge this up during the day. You could also have a gas generator that you could charge this up with. So if you had a long-term power outage, you could definitely keep your food from spoiling. Well, now that we've finished talking about the AC inverter, let's go ahead and transition over to talking about the DC output for the power station or the 12 volt output to power any of your gadgets on the go. Now looking at the front, you have a 12 volt cigarette plug with a dust cover, and then you have two 5521 barrel connections. Now there are a variety of tests that I like to do, so let's go ahead and start with the testing I did on the 12 volt output. Now to test to see if it was regulated, I plugged in a battery load tester to see what the voltage was with no load at all. And it was sitting right around 12.9 to 13 volts output. Now the battery inside is actually a 24 volt, 50 amp hour battery. So the output definitely has to be dropped down from that 24 volt uh, battery. So this is indeed regulated. So putting a load on my battery load tester, I was able to pull 145 watts from the 12 volt socket. And then testing the 5521 connection, I was able to pull another 145 watts from that one as well. Now to see what I could pull from both of those combined, see if we get a little bit more power or not, I hooked up two battery load testers and I was able to pull the same 144 to 145 watts before it shut off from being overloaded. So just keep in mind that appears to be the actual limit here. Now in the owner's manual, they do state that you should only pull 36 watts from each one of those 5521 connections. And that's because they can get fairly hot with a large load over a long period of time. So I would recommend keeping your larger load to the actual 12 volt socket on the front here. Now there are a few other tests that I like to do on the DC output. The first one being how much power does the DC output use over a given amount of time if we leave it on with no load. I like to call this the idle power draw test. So I charged this up to 100%. I left the DC output on for 10 hours with no load. And when I came back, it was still sitting at 100%. So very good idle power draw 
on the DC output of this power station. Now, the next test that I like to do is an actual discharge test to see how much capacity we can get through the DC output. I'm expecting really good results here. Now, this is advertised to have 1,280 watt hours of capacity. So I had this charged up to 100% and discharged it at 10 amps. And by the time that test had finished, I was able to pull 1,269 watt hours or 99% of the advertised capacity. That is the best test that I've ever gotten on a DC output of a power station. So Vigorpool has beat all the other competition for the DC output capacity. So huge thumbs up there. We almost got the full rated output when trying to get DC power from this power station. So if you are looking to run some sort of DC appliance, a 12 volt compressor fridge or anything like that. There are no auto shut off settings and we got almost full rated power. So very different from a lot of the other tests that I do, especially on the larger power stations, this one can get 99% of the advertised capacity. Now this power station also has plenty of USB ports for charging up your mobile devices. Taking a closer look, you have two 100 watt power delivery ports that support output power only. And you have two USB-A ports that support Quick Charge 3.0. Now on the top of the power station, you also have a 10 watt wireless charging pad and it did work charging my cell phone just fine. Now to test out the USB-C power delivery ports, I plugged in two different power stations just to see if I get 100 watts output. I was able to get 100 watts plus into my Energizer 320 and I was able to get 60 watts into my Upez 600 because that's all that that one supports. Now I did swap those and I was able to get 100 watts out of each one of these ports. So good to go there. And to test the maximum amount of power out of the USB ports and the DC output, I was able to pull a total of 300 watts out of the front of the power station. So lots of power available if you want to power any of your 12 volt accessories or USB gadgets on the go. And the next portion of the video, I wanna talk about charging up the Captain 1200. Now, if you look at the bottom of the front of the power station, you have this flap that you can lift up and you can see two different charging ports underneath that flap. One of them is for AC charging input and one of them is for DC charging input. Now to charge this power station off the grid, they include an AC charging cable. That means there are no external charging bricks with this power station. And when you plug this in, you can charge at 800 watts, meaning you can get this full in about an hour and a half of charging time, which is fairly quick. Now the other charging port is an Anderson power pole input. It supports 12 volts all the way up to 56 volts input and it does limit itself to 12 amps. Meaning you can get around 400 watts of charging input using the Anderson power pole input off of a variety of different DC power sources. Now they include a 12 volt cigarette charging cable in the box. So I plug this into my 12 volt battery just to see how much power you get whenever you charge this off your vehicle and I was able to charge at 120 watts. That means I could completely charge up this power station in about 10 hours using a 12 volt battery. Now I also wanted to do some real world solar testing on the Captain 1200 and Vigorpool sent out two of their 200 watt folding solar panels out. So let's go ahead and see how these did. Now I set both of these up facing the sun. Now these are quad fold panels with an ETFE coating and they also have four kickstands so they lay fairly straight. Now when I was testing, the solar conditions were fairly good. It was right around 75 degrees. There were no clouds in the sky and just a teeny bit of haze. Now the first panel, when I plugged it in, I was actually getting right around 159 watts. And when I plugged in the second panel, I was getting around 150 watts, so a little bit less power. Now I wanted to test to see how well these performed in partial shading to see how they were wired together. And when I tested one of the panels in partial shading, I got 77 watts output, meaning they are wired together in parallel. So if you partially shade, you're only gonna lose the power for the panels that are shaded. Now the Captain 1200 does have the ability to accept panels together in series because it accepts up to 56 volts. These panels come with MC4 connections and they come with Anderson power pole connections. So I connected together the panels in series and plugged it into the Captain 1200 and I was able to get 307 watts. I was not quite able to hit the 400 watt limit, even though you possibly could if you had the perfect panels to plug into this guy. Now, if you were getting 400 watts, it would charge in a little over three hours. So you definitely can charge this up fairly quick using solar panels. 
Now the final test that I like to do on a power station is to see if it accepts pass-through charging. So I turned on the AC inverter, the DC output, and I had it charging at the same time. And I didn't see any issues. This power station does accept pass-through charging and it was able to charge and discharge for 30 minutes without any problems, so thumbs up there. Well, now that we've finished testing the actual outputs of the power station, I just wanna talk about a few other details. Let's go ahead and start with the display. Now, the display is definitely bright enough to see in the middle of the day. You get your watts input, your watts output, it gives you an estimated time remaining, which is nice to be able to see when it's gonna be empty or when it's gonna be full, whether it's charging or discharging. And you get an actual battery percentage there in the middle. So you get a good readout of how long the battery is going to last you. Now you do have the ability to connect to this with uh, your smartphone via an Android or Apple app. Once you connect, you can actually turn on and off the uh, outputs. You have the ability to turn on and off the LED lights, which have a couple different brightness settings and flashing settings. One's SOS, you have strobe mode, which is pretty cool to be able to change those. Also, you can adjust the charging speed. So if you don't wanna charge at the full 800 watts, you can set it to slow charging and it'll actually charge at 400 watts from the wall. So it's nice to have that option as well. Now, Vigorpool does offer a two-year warranty for this product. Uh, if you reach out to support at vigorpool.com uh, with any of your issues, they should take care of you. Now, this is a fairly lightweight power station, comes in at 33 pounds. There are two large handles on the top, make it easy to carry around. And the build quality and uh, kind of finish of the product are very high end. It feels like a premium product. So very impressed by the actual performance and build quality of the Captain 1200. Now, what about the score on this power station? How well did this do on my power station grading sheet? Well, there are 10 points available. No power station has gotten a perfect score. Let's go ahead and see how well this one did. Number one, can this charge to 100% in less than four hours? Yes, with AC charging, it can charge to 100% in 1.5 hours. It gets a point there. Number two, does this power station accept pass-through charging? Yes, you can charge it and discharge it at the same time with no issues, it gets a point there. Number three, does this have a pure sine wave inverter sitting at 120 volts? Yes, the output power we got from the inverter was really good. Thumbs up, we give it a point there. Number four, does this have a regulated DC output? The output is regulated right at 12.9 volts, so we can give it a point there. Number five, does this have an informational display? Yes, this gives you a really good display, shows you your watts input, watts output, estimated time, and an actual battery percentage, so we'll give it a point there as well. Number six, does this have any auto shutoff settings, meaning does it shut off the DC output or the AC inverter automatically or randomly? No, I did not see any issues with that, so we give it a point there. Number seven, does this have UPS functionality? Yes, it does. And in our testing, the 10 millisecond swap over worked just fine. So huge thumbs up there to have such a nice UPS and a power station like this. So we'll give it a point there. Number eight, does the power station meet at least 85% of its rated capacity? Now this is one of the best parts about this power station. We got 85% from the AC inverter on our discharge test. And with the DC discharge test, we got 99% of the advertised capacity. So very high scores here. We'll definitely give it a point there. Number nine, does this charge up to 100% while using solar panels within five hours? Most people have around five hours of good solar throughout the day, especially in the winter. So it's important to be able to have a fast charging power station with solar panels. This one will charge up in about three hours or about four hours, depending on the actual amount of solar panels that you have plugged in. So we do give it a point there. And number 10, one of the most important things, what about the price per watt hour on this power station? Now our goal for a full point here would be 80 cents or less, and a goal for a half point here would be a dollar or less. Now this comes in at 85 cents per watt hour, so we're gonna give it a half point here. Now if we tally up all those points, that's 9.5 points out of 10 points available. So one of the best scores that we've gotten on a power station here, this one checks almost all the boxes. So very impressive score on the power station grading system. Now we're coming to the end of the video here where I give you guys a few final thoughts about the power station and what I thought about it. Maybe some pros and cons, things like that. Now overall, there isn't much to complain about with the Captain 1200. Uh, one thing that I was thinking would be a little bit nicer is a little bit more solar input. I would have loved to see over 500 watts, maybe the you know 600 to 700 watt level for solar panels on something like this. Um, the 400 watts is decent, but I would have liked to see just a little bit more. The other thing that I think would be really cool to change about the power station is have the ability to have just an expansion battery if you're fine with the 1200 watt inverter, just to give someone 
uh, a more affordable expansion option. Um, that would be really cool to just have an expansion battery if you want it, or you can have you know, another unit itself. Now, if you purchase two of these, you're up around the $2,200 mark. Now, remember, it has around 2,500 watt hours of capacity, so it's still under a dollar per watt hour, and you get the 2,400 watt inverter when you have two of them connected together. Now, that uh, parallel accessory is something you have to buy from Vigorpool. It does not come with the second unit, so just keep that in mind. Now, the other thing that was pretty interesting were those 200 watt solar panels. Now, they were high quality. Now, we did see 150 to 160 watts from those panels, but just be aware, the price of $599 for those panels is very, very expensive. So I'm not sure um, it's worth it to purchase those unless you can get a more affordable price for those panels. So just be aware, uh, maybe they have a better bundle deal where you're not gonna spend $600 on each one of those panels. Now they do have a 100 watt panel and a 400 watt panel um, option available. So you don't have to go with the 200 watt options, but that's the only one that I was able to test for the 200 watt panels. Now I'd love to get your guys' feedback on the Captain 1200. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Also throw a comment down below. What did you guys like about the Captain 1200? What were some features that you thought were pretty cool? Or what would you love to see on a power station like this? Throw a comment down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. I invite you guys to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed so you don't miss out on any future content. And well, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.